Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to start a new chapter which is infrared spectroscopy from organic spectroscopy. Before this, we studied the topics of UV visible spectroscopy. So, today we will discuss the main basic theme of the infrared spectroscopy and different types of vibrations. So let's start with the infrared spectroscopy IR or IR spectroscopy. It is also known as vibrational spectroscopy because it is concerned with the vibration of the molecules. The importance of this spectroscopy is the detection of different functional groups. So we can detect different functional groups in our compound or we can detect our compounds on the basis of their functional groups. In this IR spectroscopy the molecular vibrational excitation occurs because of the frequency of the molecular vibrations matches with the frequency of the IR region of the electromagnetic radiation. The infrared region of the electromagnetic radi radiation which is most important or which usually matches the vibrational excitation or frequency of the vibrations is the mid IR region which is from 2.5 micro to 16 micrometer or it corresponds in case of wave number from 625 per centimeter to 4000 per centimeter. The region which is near infrared from 0.8 to 2.5 micrometer and far infrared which is 16 to 10 power 3 micrometer. But in vibrational excitation this mid infrared region is most important. The principle of IR spectroscopy is that the absorption of infrared radiation is associated with the excitation of the molecules. So excitation of the molecule occurs from vibrational ground state to the vibrational excited state and during this amplitude of the vibration increases but frequency of the vibration remains same. The absorbed energy is released in the form of heat and the molecule reverts back from excited state to the ground state. So here if we look at the diagram in which we have different vibrational energy levels the molecule get excited when it absorbs IR region infrared radiations so it, it, it is get excited from vibrational ground state to the vibrational excited states and during this absorption of the energy the difference in energy level is H nu which is from Planck's and uh, when it get back from higher to ground state the vibrational relaxation occurs which is uh, dissipated so dissipated in the form of heat. If we look at the different types of fundamental vibrations so we have different vibrational motions so fundamental vibrations are actually the vibrations of different bonds or functional groups there are two types of web fundamental vibrations which are stretching vibrations and bending or deformation vibrations in stretching vibration interatomic distance increases or decreases which is of further two types symmetric and antisymmetric yeah, or asymmetric and in bending vibrations the change of angle occurs but di distance between different atoms remains same. So first we will take the stretching vibrations. Stretching vibrations are symmetric and asymmetric. In symmetric stretching vibration if we look at the example of this system in which we have three different atoms the these two hydrogen atoms from the carbon atom the distance increases in both side simultaneously so if this bond stretches at a time this bond also stretches and then it comes back and both comes back simultaneously so this is the symmetric stretching in which the direction of the stretching is same in both directions in case of asymmetric or anti-symmetric stretching one bond is is going in this direction and the other bond is coming back so uh, or, or we can also look at this that this bond is 
this this atom is become become close to the carbon and this atom this hydrogen atom gets distanced or further from the carbon so in this case the stretching occurs in this direction and this atom becomes closer or this atom come closer and this atom goes further so it is antisymmetric the direction of the stretching is different from each other if we look at the bending vibrations bending vibrations are maybe of two types in plane and out of plane in plane bending vibrations are of further two types rocking and scissoring during rocking the these atoms we are going to take the same example of these three atoms so these bonds become move in this direction it is rocking or again they will move in the backward direction so like this in case of scissoring they these angle become change and they move like a scissor so and in this direction and then again they come back the out of plane there are two types of out of plane bending vibrations that are twisting and waging so total we have four bending vibrations rocking scissoring twisting and waging so twisting is that the one bond comes forward but the other bond come backward or other atom goes backward so both in both cases like here this hydrogen is coming forward this hydrogen will will be going backward and vice versa if it is coming forward this will go back but in case of waging both these bonds or both these atoms simultaneously will come forward and then they will go back so plus sign represents that coming forward and minus sign represents that they are going towards the backward direction so these are the different types of fundamental vibrations that occurs in molecule now if we look at the degree of freedom or uh, how many uh, molecular vibrations occur in a molecule it depends on number of the atoms so each atom has three degree of freedom which are on x axis y axis and z, z axis so a molecule consisting of n atoms will have 3n degree of freedom excluding the translational and rotational motions we will get the vibrational motions so in nonlinear molecule the vibrational modes will be 3n minus 6 and in case of linear molecule the vibrational modes will be 3n minus 5 so in case of linear molecular vibrations will be greater than nonlinear molecules so these are the degree of uh, vibrations which are responsible for ir absorption and they get excited for example water molecule has three vibrational modes if we look at this it is the nonlinear so 3n minus 6 it will we will get three so these three vibrational uh, uh, these three vibrations are stretching symmetrical stretching so both bonds are in the going in the same direction stretching so in in anti-symmetric stretching the stretching occurs in opposite direction so in this way or in this way so these are the opposite stretching and in case we have third which is Mm, bending vibration in which angle changes this is the scissoring so these three are the vibrational modes that are present in water molecule if we look at the linear molecule like carbon dioxide it has four vibrational modes these four vibrational modes are stretching symmetrical stretching so both atoms are stretched in the same direction anti-symmetric stretching one is coming towards the carbon and another is going away from the carbon and in case of scissoring these these two oxygen atoms are going backward and this carbon is coming forward so in this case the angle is is changed and in the same way it is going upward and these are going downward so these two scissoring vibrations are almost in the uh, present in the same ir region not each and every fundamental vibration is responsible for IR absorption. 
so only those vibrations which are infrared active are responsible for the infrared absorption so now we are going to discuss what are the ir active or ir inactive vibrations so ir active vibrations versus ir inactive vibrations first we will look at the what are the ir active vibrations the vibrations which causes fluctuation in the dipole moment are called ir active vibrations fluctuating dipole causes fluctuating electric field which interacts with the fluctuating electric field of the electromagnetic radiation with matching frequency thus energy is transferred resulting vibrational excitation the vibrations which do not cause change in dipole moment are called ir inactive vibrations so first we observed that if the vibrations if the if the vibrations are going to change or fluctuate the dipole moment they will cause the fluctuating electric field and this fluctuating electric field when it matches with the electromagnetic radiation they will get excited but in case of those vibrations which are not changing the dipole moment these radiation these vibrations will be ir inactive now we are going to take examples of ir active and inactive vibrations like here if we look at the carbon dioxide we have anti-symmetric stretching in anti-symmetric stretching this oxygen is stretching in this direction but this is coming towards the carbon or vice versa so both the cases the dipole moment is going to change so if the dipole moment is changed these vibrations will be ir active but in case of symmetric stretching both atom come closer or go further from the carbon so in both cases uh, in symmetric stretching these the dipole moment is not going to, to change so in this case the ir vib the, the vibrations are, are ir inactive in case of bending vibrations or scissoring which occurs in carbon dioxide like in this direction or in this direction in both cases the dipole moment is going to change because this partial negative charge comes downward and this partial positive charge get upward so in this case if we look at this the direction of the dipole moment becomes in this direction so the net dipole moment is not zero in case of carbon dioxide if we look at this movement uh, or this motion so both these symmetric anti-symmetric uh, anti stretching and bending vibrations are i r inactive so all these kind of vibrations are discussed which are i r active or i r inactive vibrations so today we discussed the different type of vibrational modes and i r active and i r inactive vibrations next time we will discuss hooke's law and the factors that affect ir absorption so thanks for today